the smell of bacon frying. What could be nicer? But wait a minute. What happens when we fry bacon? Or cook any food for that matter? Well, quite a lot of chemistry actually. There are numerous sources of pollution in a typical building and cooking is just one of them. There are pollutant emissions associated with cleaning, candle burning, air freshener use and wood stove use. Even furnishings like sofas and carpets can lead to emissions of pollutants indoors. Scientists are starting to understand what leads to high concentrations of different pollutants indoors and more importantly, what we can do about it. When you cook, you make lots of tiny particles called particulate matter, just like cars make when they burn fuel. Particulate matter is small and can get into your lungs. This exposure can lead to adverse health effects at high or sustained concentrations, so policymakers have guidelines for the particulate matter outdoors. We know that the composition of particulate matter formed from cooking is likely to be different from that made in car engines, but we aren't sure whether cooking particles affect health differently. And the guidelines that are designed to protect us from pollutants emitted by cars may not actually be applicable for those emitted by cooking. So what do we know about the impact of cooking on indoor air quality already? We know cooking with gas leads to higher concentrations of particles than cooking with electric or induction hobs. If you're updating or renovating your kitchen, a simple thing to do is replace gas with electric or induction cooking devices. We also know frying leads to higher particle concentrations than boiling or steaming. In fact, frying meat is one of the most efficient ways to make particles. The type of food we cook is also important. Frying vegetables leads to much lower emission rates of particulate matter than meat. So changing your cooking method or the type of food you cook can also lower emissions of air pollutants indoors. Cooking also emits volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. VOCs comprise carbon and hydrogen atoms, and sometimes other atoms like oxygen. A category of VOCs called the terpenoids can give food its range of amazing aromas. Limonene and citral provide the characteristic smell in lemons, whilst menthol will be familiar to anyone using mint leaves. However, terpenoids are very reactive indoors and once released, can undergo a series of reactions to form more harmful VOCs like formaldehyde as well as particulate matter. We're studying these processes in our impeccable study at the University of York in the UK, which aims to look at the impacts of cooking and cleaning on indoor air quality towards healthy buildings for the future. One of the sophisticated instruments we use is called a SIFT MS, which uses a technique called mass spectrometry to identify the molecular mass of the species emitted when we cook. By combining this information with carefully calibrated standards, we can calculate typical emission rates of the VOCs and add this information to detailed indoor air quality models. The model results then provide us with additional insight into the chemical processing indoors, such as the formation of stealth pollutants we're currently unable to measure, but that may be harmful to human health. We've started to look at what happens with emissions of gases and particulate matter from heating different oils, different spices, and cooking different meals. We see VOC emissions as soon as we heat a pan of oil, but these increase dramatically upon adding herbs or spices. We noticed when we added a tin of tomatoes to a beef chili, the emissions decreased significantly as the tomatoes lowered the temperature and dampened the impact of frying meat. So what can you do to minimize your exposure to pollutants from cooking? Ventilate. Always use the extractor fan when cooking. Make sure it vents to outdoors, not into the kitchen. This will also remove moisture, such as from boiling, if you don't have an extractor fan, opening a window for 10 minutes after cooking should be sufficient to remove pollutants. Use the back rings on your hob rather than the front. The extractor fan works more efficiently with these. Switch to electric or induction cooking devices where possible. Steam or boil rather than fry. Limit high polluting activities like frying meat. 
Nobody's saying don't have that bacon butty, but if you do, make sure you ventilate the kitchen and reduce your exposure to the generated pollutants by as much as you can.